I wonder how well this team would work in sports, especially with Passimian leading with the ball. I wonder what sports they would play. Maybe volleyball, maybe something else. Not exactly too sure. But this Passimian, unfortunately, probably wouldn't be that great because it is not a receiver. Hey everyone, James back here. Welcome back to another episode of VGC 2020 Back to Back Battles. Today, we're going to be using Station Park's Invitational Team, uh, the World Championship Invitational Team, once again with Dragavolt. Dragavolt or Dragazolt? I can't remember anymore. Simeon, Whimsicott, Togekiss, uh, Darmanitan, Galarian Form, and the Duraldon. So if you haven't checked out the previous episode, highly recommend go checking out. And yeah, today's common question for today is do you play any sports, whether for fun, for competition? Let me know in the comments down below. And by sports, I am talking about physical sports for this one. Um... Because I'm not going to go into that argument where whether esports is a sport. Even though chess is considered a sport, I think, because it's in the Olympics. I'm not going to get into that topic. But let's get started and play some games. We got Christian. Rank 9 with the team of Whimsicott, Gyarados, Grimmsnarl, Dracovish, uh, Lucario, and Hydreigon. So, um, okay. This is going to be interesting because we got the battle of the dinosaurs here. The fossil dinosaur. We got Whimsicott Mirror. Um, I feel like we have a really, really good matchup with our Dracozolt. I think Dracozolt's really good in this game. So I think I am going to bring Dracozolt and Whimsicott as a lead. Because I think it's really strong against my opponent. Because my opponent really does not like taking the uh, hustle boosted max attacks. And I think that's really good against my opponent. Because my opponent does not have anything good. Uh, for that matchup Yeah, I really like that combination. I really do like Darmanitan I think in the back and uh, Togekiss or Duraldon. It's between the two. I'm liking Togekiss a bit more because I like having that redirection support um, Yeah, my opponent does have some Pokemon that Passimian could potentially do work on but I don't know if the Gyarados is Intimidator or Moxie. If it's, in, if it's Moxie, it's not really going to work as well. So I don't think I would want to bring Passimian in this game. I think Togekiss is really good because of the Fallen Me redirection. So let's get, let's go with the Togekiss. It also also Hydreigon, which is really nice. Uh, getting rid of Lucario is probably the prime objective right here. Because I think Lucario is the biggest threat to my team offensively. So let's see how this is going to go. As we will see. We will see. Hopefully we can uh, pull this off. I should probably update my trainer card. I haven't really touched my trainer card in this game for a while. We're going to see the Lucario plus the Whimsicott lead here, which is fine. Against my uh, uh, Draco Zolt plus the Whimsicott. I think I'm just going to go for a Tailwind. And the question is, does Lucario protect? Because I'm actually not too sure. I kind of want to go for Max Airstream in the Whimsicott because I'm not exactly too sure. And I think I am going to go for a Tailwind because I think this covers for Protect from Lucario and a Tailwind from Winsicott to match my own Tailwind. That way you could double up the Draco's ult the following turn. And yeah, I think I kind of like that. I think the only problem I think potentially is my opponent goes for the beat up right away. Which I feel like is very unlikely because Bolt Beak would knock out Lucario if I just Tailwind. So, and I would outspeed it with the, how the mechanics work. So, we will go for the Dynamax here. Wait for Draco's ult. I actually don't remember how this Pokemon is legitimately pronounced. Oh, dang it. Uh, there's no uh, Dynamax for my opponent. So maybe Lucario's just protecting your turn one, I'm thinking. No, it's not. Are you just going for regular beat up? Um, the Whimsicott didn't... Um, oh, no. Whimsicott did Tailwind. We speak tight. Okay, that's fine. That is fine. We're going to see the Lucario just go for the Meteor Mash, which is completely okay, into my Whimsicott. Uh, bring me down to my focus ash but that's completely fine as whimsicott will be brought down to focus ash no attack boost max airstream gonna come out and boost up my pokemon speed so uh that should be focus ash on whimsicott it does live with one hp it looks like yep okay perfect lucaro doesn't have extreme speed and usually on beat up teams they don't like to run extreme speed anymore they like to run like earthquake close combat protect and uh Medium match, close combat, or quick protect. Yep. So we will go for the max lightning into the Lucario slot and we'll Moonblast the Whimsicott. Uh, let me just check if Moonblast is optimal over Energy Ball. Yeah, Moonblast hits everything on my opponent's team super effectively. I will fire off a Moonblast into the Whimsicott slot and we're going to get a huge attack in the Lucario. Actually, it does carry Bullet Punch, huh? Okay, so this one is actually carrying Bullet Punch. Hmm. 
Uh, okay, so I can't knock out the Whimsicott, but I'll still be able to knock out the Lucario. We do outspeed the Whimsicott, even under Talon, because we had the plus one boost. We are going to be able to knock out the Lucario immediately, which is nice, and get Electric Turing up, so our Draco Gold here is going to do a ton of damage to my opponent the following turn. Lucario goes down. Don't tell me this is a random Trick Room. Please don't tell me it's not a random Trick Room. It's just a Moonblast, which is completely fine. It gets a critical hit, it looks like. That did a lot. Oh, it didn't get a crit. That's just a lot of damage. Uh, we could go Darmanitan, though. Like, very safe play to go Darmanitan. And we'll see what my opponent decides to go for. I wonder if my opponent does have a Choice Guard Pokemon. Maybe in the Hydreigon, potentially? I could definitely see it being the Hydreigon. If it is the Hydreigon, I do have to be a little bit cautious. But I think overall, we're fine. We'll bring out the Darmanitan against the uh, Hydreigon, which is coming out. So, I'm guessing it would be Scarf. Potentially. Hmm. Maybe I should have brought Toga Kiss if I was expecting Hydreigon. I don't have Protect, so... Yeah, this could get a bit ugly. Um... I mean, I think Icicle Crash would knock out the Hydreigon anyway, I want to say. I'm going to Airstream, and then I'm actually going to go for Icicle Crash. Because I feel like I would knock... I feel like I would outspeed Hydreigon with my... Uh, I... Because you don't have your Choice Scarf boost anymore when you Dynamax with Hydreigon as the thing. Uh, so my opponent's actually going to Dynamax, and I'm pretty sure you lose the Choice Scarf benefit. So this is actually pretty nice here. I get an airstream so I can increase my Darmanitan speed even further, which is nice. But like, okay, it's not Scarf Hydreigon. I almost knock it out. That's crazy. That actually almost picked up the knockout. Airstream gonna come out. Maybe I should have thought about this more. I'm pretty sure I just knocked it out with Max Dragon from Draco's ult into an Icicle Crash. I was just worried if it was Scarf Hydreigon. Um, I wanted to pick up the knock on Hydreigon. Uh, Williams got does go down, and we will see my opponent go for the Max Flare, actually. It's not even going to be... Okay. That's completely fine. Let's bring out the Sun, which doesn't really have any benefits, I feel like, here. Okay. So I wonder if the Draco Vision is in the back or not. I'm going to bring out my uh, Togekiss, and yeah, it is Draco Vision in the back. Okay. This got into a really interesting position, so I will bring out the Togekiss. Uh, we're in a pretty good spot, I think, to win the game. Even though my opponent has the Dynamax still available, the Hydreigon super low. I can go for Aerial Ace into that Hydreigon slot, and I can go for a Follow Me if I want to. Or I can go for a Dazzling Gleam, and I do like the Dazzling Gleam, I think, a bit better, since I should 2 KO both of these Pokemon regardless. Um... Since it's in Sun, I, maybe you would like an... I just don't know if you would lock in an Ice Fang. Uh, I, I'd still try it out, I think. I think I'm going to just Dazzling Gleam here. I'm not sure if Hydreigon protects. I'm assuming it, it would, but my opponent could go on the Miss Factor because if... I feel like he would go on the Miss Factor, though. But Hydreigon could max guard. It doesn't, though, so that should be game 100%. We're able to knock the Hydreigon guaranteed, so Hydreigon does go down to that aerial ace that we cannot miss thankfully even though we have hustle activated right now uh luckily we can't miss vicious rand actually going to come out which in sun isn't even going to knock on my draco salt and we will go for a dazzling gleam into the draco fish and wow singles heart actually picks up a knockout with a critical hit thanks to our super luck coming in uh, unnecessary uh crit we did not need it to win but we'll take it anyway so I guess, like, what I was worried about was the Hydreigon being Scarf. It outspeeds my Draco Zolt because of the fact that uh, Hydreigon naturally outspeeds the Draco Zolt even at plus one speed. And it would outspeed my Darmanitan. So I think the thing I was worried about the most, which is why I airstreamed the Whimsicott slot, is because I was worried about Hydreigon locking the Fire Blast, knocking out the Darmanitan. Whimsicott going for a... I knock out the uh, Hydreigon slot with the Draco Zolt. And then the problem is the Whimsicott knocks me out, so it's a 2v1 situation. And I wasn't sure what my opponent in the back had. So I felt like it was the best play to go for the Icicle Crash knockout into the Hydreigon slot. And Max Airstream the Whimsicott slot. And the reason I wanted to make that play was because of the fact that if Hydreigon 
let's say had protect went for the max guard i guarantee the knock on the whims got slot and yeah i was able to get an icicle crash into the hydreigon if the opponent doesn't attack the Darmanitan slot and I either pick up a KO onto the Hydreigon because it didn't Dynamax or I put it in a 2 a KO range and I both my Pokemon out speed the Hydreigon anyway. So I was going to be in a good position regardless and Whimsicott could not revenge KO my Darmanitan. So that was the main reason why I wanted to make that play is because I felt the Hydreigon was the bigger threat and I didn't want to lose two Pokemon in that situation. So yeah, I think that worked out pretty nicely as we got, let's see, Focus Ash Whimsicott... This one had Trick Room too. Oh man, imagine how bad this would have been if my opponent got a Trick Room. That would have been extremely bad. Uh, three attacks, Gyarados with Dragon Dance. Just barely Grim Snarl. Three attacks, actually. Huh. Uh, Choice Band? Choice Scarf, actually. Okay. Um, I was at plus two speed, though, so it didn't matter anyway. Uh, Metal Coat Lucario, huh? Not the Shuckaberry, and doesn't have Earthquake, which is an interesting pick. And Choice Scarf? No, Choice Specs. Okay. All right. So I think Togekiss was still a better play, regardless, to bring in the Togekiss because I felt like the only thing that could scare me was the uh, I Dragon, and I think I could have got more uh, value out of my uh, Draco Volt, my Draco Zolt. So I think Togekiss was still a better play. We did win regardless, but. You know, there's always those little things you could do better. And I feel like if you ever want to improve, I keep stressing this on my series. If you ever want to improve, you got to look back on the little details. Even if you won that game uh, pretty cleanly, you still got to look at those little details that you could have done better regardless. I, it's always that risk versus reward, which I emphasize a lot when I play competitive Pokemon or any game in general. We got fit rank 10. I don't know what the rank is. I forgot how much we had to do to get back to master rank. We got Whimsicott, Mudsdale, the Sylveon, Gyarados, Morpico, and Grimmsnarl. So, looks like we got Own Tempo, Mudsdale. This could be Trick Room on the Whimsicott this time. Like, I think I could actually see why it would be Trick Room this time. Sylveon and Mudsdale are pretty slow. Um, yeah, so this should be interesting. Um... How do I want to approach this is my question. I kind of like. I want the route on. The Mudsdale is actually really scary. Because I don't know if I have really good ways to deal with the Mudsdale. I think I want to go. I want to go. I think the Draco Zolt plus the. Uh, Togekiss lead. I think I want to go Darmanitan and the route on as my backup. Yeah, I'm going to do that. My post team is actually relatively slow. I'm not sure. I feel like Whimsicott is going to be brought here, but I feel like Whimsicott can... I mean, my Togekiss can help me a lot because Mudsdale don't really carry Earthquake. And I could just redirect attacks away from my Draco Bolt. So we'll see what comes out here from my opponent. I'm not exactly too sure. It's going to be Grimmsnarl Gyarados. So... This is a pretty optimal lead if I ever said so. Uh, we're going to uh, lead off pretty strongly here. I'm thinking my opponent's maybe trying to bait me into targeting the Gyarados style with an Electro-type move, bringing the Mudsdale, setting up a screen, and then self-swaggering. Like, that's what I'm expecting here. So I'm actually going to go straight for the Dazzling Gleam and uh, go for the Bolt Beak into the Grimmsnarl. Because I don't know if I want to Dynamax this Pokemon yet, and I don't feel like I have to immediately. And I feel like, yeah, you would withdraw Gyarados. I'm pretty sure the Mudsdale's coming. Yep. Pretty much anticipated. Set up your Swagger, your Light Screen. Yep, Light Screen's going to come out. I should still do a decent amount, especially if I hit. And I can crit the Grimmsnarl with the Fang. I do hit my first Bolt Beak, which is nice. The first time I ever used this move. Does a... Not as much as I would have liked, personally. We will get a Dazzling Gleam off. We don't fall for the bait. We do an okay amount. We'll knock out the Grimmsnarl with a following turn. Um, I guess another play I could do is follow me here to redirect the swagger, and I actually kind of like that play a lot, because, um, this thing at plus two could be really scary, yeah. I'm gonna aerial ace the Grimmsnarl and not miss, and I'm gonna follow me. I have Babiri Berry, I'll live in the attack from the Mudsdale. If we go for the max ground, we're fine. Doesn't Dynamax, actually, which I was expecting, but that works out perfectly. 
Uh, we are going to see... Ooh, just reflect. Okay. Nice play from my opponent. Getting at least some kind of uh, momentum value. Uh, will I realize KO? I think it should. Yeah, it does. Okay. Nice. And let's see what the Mudstale goes for. It's going to be the high horsepower. So, pretty good turn overall. That's definitely a win in our book. Because we were able to avoid a KO here. We... I have a pretty strong lead here, but of course my opponent can get a lot of momentum off. Um, I think I'm not going to Dynamax this Pokemon in this game. I think I'm going to be Dynamaxing the... It's either the Duraldon or the Darmanitan, for sure. It's not... It is going to be inner... Uh, did I say it was inner focus? I meant own tempo on the Mudsdale. Yeah, that's what it's going to be. I'm going to Bolt Beak the Sylveon. I'm going to try to get some chip. I should still be doing a decent amount of damage. I'm going to yawn, I think, because I want momentum. What do I want to yawn, though? I think I want to yawn the uh, Mudstale. Oh, yeah, I'm going to yawn the Mudstale. There is a Dynamax coming out. I'm not sure who it is. If it's a Sylveon, it's kind of worse for me because this yawn is going to be worthless. But I'm okay with that because it's not like too bad a situation if it is. It is going to be the Mudstale Dynamax. So I'm not surprised. I'll get a yawn off into the Mudsdale. I'll get some chip. Not too bad. Not exactly the most ideal position, but it's not too bad. Bolt Beak. Ah, we missed a Sylveon. That would have been really good chip we could have had. Oh, well. Get the yawn. That's going to be pretty big for later, I think. Hyper Boy's going to come out, knock me out. Oh, can my opponent get a double knockout with Max Rockfall? I guess we'll find out. Uh, we're going to see the Throat Spray activate from the Sylveon. And Max Steel Spike. Okay, so you don't knock out my Togekiss, which is good. Hmm. Yeah, you don't knock out my Togekiss. It's good. Uh, gets a critical hit, even. But I don't think it really matters too much. Uh, defense Rise on both Pokemon. That Muzzle is going to be really annoying for my Pokemon to deal with later in the game. But I think we can win with the route on. I'm going to go the route on here. Um, kind of want to see. My opponent should be trying to activate my own weakness posse. I think I'm gonna go for yawn into the Sylveon slot. Um, I'm trying to think. Is yawn better or just dazzling gleaming? I think yawn is fine. I don't know Muzdale switching out. That's the one thing. I feel like you shouldn't switch out Mudsdale. I think you're going to go for Max Ground. If you switch out, it's not that big of a deal for me, I think, personally. Because um, I don't think Gyarados is that big of a threat to me at the current moment. We're actually going to see Sylveon Retreat into the Gyarados, which is actually much better for me. Okay. That's much better for me, I think. Because I'm not really scared of the Gyarados. I'm more scared of the Mudsdale. Uh, we're going to see what come out. We're going to see... Me protect with the... Uh, the route on we're gonna see probably max quake actually would you max quake or are you gonna max steel spike again either way it's fine get the yawn off in the gyarados so unless it's lumberry we're fine max steel okay so my opponent wanted to dodge i think what was going to be the max steel into sylveon um i didn't want to go for it because light screen was active so i don't think i would have knocked out now we're actually in a pretty good spot i think my opponent still has screens i'm guessing here comes the sleep. We get to bring out our Darmanitan. I think we get to click Ice Icicle Crash. And now the question is, what do I really want to go for attack-wise? Um, because I kind of want to go for... Okay, I, I think I just want to double up the Gyarados slot. Because it's going to probably go, uh, go to sleep anyway. How many turns of screens are left? Um... Uh, I think you're either going to switch into Sylveon or you're going to attack here. I maybe should just double up the Mudsdale anyway because the Mudsdale is probably a bigger threat anyway. I think Gyarados could switch out, but that's fine, I think. I was thinking maybe it's not worth it because, like, the Mudsdale's Dynamax, so I could be doing more damage in the later turns. But just getting the damage off, I think, is fine regardless. So we're going to see Sylveon come out again, uh, which is fine. Uh, we will go for our Dynamax here and get a lot of damage off, which I think I'm okay with. Let's see how much this does, because, like, the Mudsdale's at plus two, I think, defense. Yeah, it's at plus two defense and nothing else. 
But it's still behind screens, and I'm assuming it's Assault Vest, so it's still going to be really annoying to take down later. So, we'll bring out the Duraldon. We'll go for the Max Steel into the Mudsdale. And Ice go Crash it as well. That did absolutely no damage. Oh, wait, Stamina's not own tempo? Oh, that changes a lot. Wait, did I ever hit it? I must have found out earlier, but yeah, that's not good for me. Okay. Jeez, I'm doing no damage. <laughs> yeah, and I keep boosting his defense, which isn't exactly good. I mean, I'll still do a decent amount afterward. And, like, the Mudsdale's not going to do much after I get my defense boost. I think I got to get rid of Sylveon, though. Sylveon's a big threat. If I can get rid of Sylveon, I'm in a good position. I'm going to go for the max uh, steal once again into the Sylveon slot. I think I'm going to double the Sylveon. Because uh, I don't know how I'm dealing with the Mudsdale. I'm probably going to have to wait for my Weeks' policy to kick in for the boost. And stall out the screens. I'm going to double the Sylveon slot since I should be able to knock out the Sylveon. Which is going to retreat, which is fair. I mean, I'll still do a good amount of damage to the Gyarados, I think. I even with the Intimidate, the screens. I'm still getting the defense boost, which is huge. Next turn, I can max Dragon as well. And lower some defense. Or I can max Steel again. Which both seem pretty good right now. Here comes a Crash. It's still Gorilla Tactics. Yeah, that's a good amount of damage regardless. Max Steel. Increase my defenses. Yeah, and the Gyarados is actually in range of another max, uh, another crash, which is really good, unless it's Citrus Berry. So we're in a very good position. Ah, it is Citrus. Uh, that's a bit annoying. Must have st stays asleep, though, which is good. Um, Again, these Pokemon aren't as much of a threat. How many turns the screen are left? Uh, two turns of light screen. I'm trying to calc in my head what's the best play. I think it's going for the max steel again into the Gyarados. I think I just double up the Gyarados regardless. Even if it protects, I think that's fine. It doesn't though. We get another Icicle Crash. So we'll knock out the Gyarados here. And then Sylveon's left alone, which I think is okay. We could also get a flinch chance. Um, oh, we're actually faster than the Gyarados, which is pretty big. Which makes sense. It did seem pretty bulky. Oh, we don't knock out the Gyarados, actually. Hmm. Alright. At least we got the defense boost, which is pretty big. Oh, we flinched the Gyarados, which is nice. And Mudsdale stays asleep. That's really nice here. Because stalling out some screen turns is really nice. We do have that chance with Icicle Crash. But, uh, yeah. This is looking pretty good. I'll go for the... Do I flash cannon or do I just dark pulse flinch the mudsdale if I can? I mean, I'm going for as much chip as possible, so. The play is to ice go crap. Do I double up the Gyarados? I think I double up the Gyarados slot in case Sylveon comes in because my opponent might want to intimidate. But I don't even think that's like worth it. Because if I get chip in Sylveon, that's fine. Yeah, I'm just going to ice go crash the Gyarados and flash cannon the mudsdale for some chip. Wow, we haven't missed an Icicle Crash yet. Okay. Okay. So we get the good damage on the Gyarados. So Gyarados does go down here. Let's see what the Muzzle goes for. Again, I don't think Gyarados was doing much. Dragon Dance would have been bad. Uh, the only thing is if it had an actual move that could like actually like threaten me. Which I think we would have been fine. Muzzle is guaranteed to wake up. Goes for the body prep. I completely forgot. I completely forgot about body press. <laughs> oh my lord. How did I forget about body press? How did I forget about body press? Okay, how many turns of screen are left? It'd be the last turn, right? Oh no, it's only reflect that's up. Okay. So attacking the must it was never the play. I don't know, Flash Cannon can crit the Sylveon. And then I live the Body Press, which I'm not even sure if I do. Uh, I would assume, but we'll see. I don't do enough to Sylveon anyway, so that's going to be game. I lowered his Spadef, but that doesn't matter. Crit doesn't even knock out. Hyper Beam, wait. Wait. Can I, is this a two-shot? Ah, uh, dang it. Why would you Hyper Beam there? I think that doesn't... Yeah, I... 
don't get the hyper beam play at all. Hyper voice was fine. What? Were you worried about me critting a Mudsdale? No. I don't. I don't like that play at all. I don't get the hyper beam play at all. Ah, I should have went for the crit. Yeah, because this is a game. I'll ask for the set. So it's not locked. I'm gonna Draco the Mudsdale. Just see how much damage it does. Does this knock out? Okay, it does knock out. But my opponent goes for Hyper Beam for some reason. You shouldn't. You should always click Hyper Voice here. Why would you? We saw his Drought Spray, right? I'm not crazy. We saw this Drought Spray, right? If we didn't see Drought Spray, I apologize because you're locked in the Hyper Beam, which I don't even think was to play regardless. But why would... Was that worth it? Was that worth it? I don't think it was. Uh, I I know I'm going to have people in the comments who are like, oh, but he won anyway. But like, why would you throw away a game you have 100% locked on you missing a 10% move when you have a move that just guarantee wins you the game right there. Like, is that worth it? Especially since I could have won that one. Um, but yeah, I guess I completely forgot about body press. I guess like, I should have paid more attention because I forgot the muzzle was stamina. Because if I realized it was stamina, I could have done a, things a lot differently. And I mean a lot differently. So. I wouldn't have been boosting the Muzdale. I would have been ignoring it the entire time, continuing to go for the Steel Spike. Yeah. Like, I think overall, I think I just probably had to pay better attention. That's my, my bad, because I completely forgot when we attacked it that it had the stamina boost. Um, so, if I was able to play around the stamina boost, I think I was just able to be put in a really amazing position. I think I should have just kept targeting the other slot, leaving that Mudsdale alone, and then like my Duraldon was probably gonna get the policy boost and just start sweeping my opponent, I think, from there. And even that end game, like it, I could have got more damage onto my opponent. I think the both beak miss did matter though, now that I think about it, but I'm not gonna complain about that because like it was still a winnable game regardless. And I'm not even sure Bullbeak would have picked up the knockout because we were at what? Minus one through reflect. I mean, Sylvan was pretty bad and we would have had the power doubled. I'm still not sure that would have KO'd. But yeah. Um, I think the main point again was just like forgetting the Mudsdale adding stamina. Because I think we saw it. If we didn't see it, I don't remember how the Mudsdale got chipped. Because like when it Dynamax, I think it had 85%. So I don't remember how it got chipped exactly. Oh, by the Dazzling Gleam, right. I used Dazzling Gleam on it, and it ended up having the stamina boost. Yeah, so I should have paid attention more to that because I completely forgot. But yeah, I think I should focus. I should have focused on everything else around the Mudsdale, and left the Mudsdale at the end completely. I thought I could get. I thought I would be doing more damage with my attacks to the Mudsdale, but through the screens, yeah, Mudsdale is just really hard to break through. Hope that you enjoyed today's episode of VGC 2020 Back to Back Battles. Though, if you did, please leave a like down below. Show support. As well as you can check out the rest of my stuff down below in the description, such as my social media, the size of my channel, and all that other good stuff. Be sure to leave a like on this video if you did enjoy it. Share it with your friends and leave a comment down below. Otherwise, if you want to go an extra mile to support my content, there is my Patreon page and my Twitch channel. Thank you to everyone who's been supporting me on those platforms recently. And if you want to try out the team that Sajin made down below in the description, alongside his Twitter and the other stuff. But otherwise, I think that's pretty much it. Have a great day, people. Until we bow again, I'll catch y'all later.